What's this? A new video on the Doug A. James channel. You guys better check it out or else... Oh, it's my mic. <laughs> Starting off the news this week, the highest court in India has ruled that cheetahs can be returned to India, nearly three quarters of a century after they were made extinct in the country. There are only around 7,100 cheetahs left in the wild, and there have long been cases made to the Indian government to reintroduce the animal. Despite this, many conservationists have expressed their doubt towards reintroducing cheetahs into a carefully chosen location, fearing that they will not be properly released into the wild, and instead have to endure some sort of restriction and captivity. Starting off the fantastic paleontology news this week, we have a new paper describing a great fossil discovery. This is the first evidence of a failed attempt of a pterosaur to feed on a soft-bodied cephalopod. A specimen of coleoid cephalopod was found perfectly preserved and in association with a pterosaur tooth, specifically from Ranphorhynchus, and it's been shown that this tooth was actually embedded within where the soft tissue would have been. So this provides evidence that Ranphorhynchus would sometimes have grabbed prey out of the water when flying above, as the paper suggests that the tooth became dislodged when the pterosaur attempted to grab the cephalopod near the water's surface. And now over to Ben in the... the, the um... Thanks, Doug. We've got some incredibly exciting dinosaur news this week, almost as if they knew Seven Days of Science was being rebooted, as not just one, but two new major species of big, exciting theropods have been named. First, we've got a new Tyrannosaur. Named Thanatotheristes digrutorum, this animal was discovered in mid-Campanian Cretaceous-aged rocks in Alberta, and the classification of this new species has revealed something very interesting. Thanatotheristes has been classed as the sister taxon to Despletosaurus, and as a result, a new clade has been formed containing these two genera, called Despletosaurini. As well as this, the discovery of this new dinosaur suggests that the way we think about the Tyrannosaur family should be different. Instead of being a series of related branches of organisms containing only one genus each, Tyrannosaurs are actually a group of several clades made up of multiple genera. And it also provides evidence for there being geographic segregation of Tyrannosaurids across North America, with groups in certain regions being different to others in separate areas. A very cool discovery indeed. But the cool science doesn't end there. Also this week we've had the naming of a brand new species of Allosaurus. Welcome Allosaurus jimadseni, a distinct Allosaurus taxon that's represented by a very complete skull and skeleton, as well as a second specimen that has an articulated skull. Additionally, the study has referred several other specimens, including the famous Big Owl individual and its sequel, Big Owl 2, to this new species. The distinctive traits that have led to this new species being recognised include features of the top of the skull, such as a blade-like nasolacrimal crest that's absent in Allosaurus fragilis, as well as differences in the postcranial skeleton. Very exciting discoveries, always great to have some good dinosaur news. Back to Doug in the studio. Brilliant, thanks very much. How was your weekend, by the way? You know, it was great, thanks. Great! Anyway, that's it from us for this week's Seven Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it, and feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. Have a wonderful week, and as always, we'll see you on Sunday.